Hi guys, Jenny with On Fire Fit and welcome to another episode of Choose My Shoes. Today is the etiquette edition. I posted recently on social media if I should make an etiquette video and so that is what this one is and you'll see how I tie this all in and what it's all about but of course there's always a message so we are for sure going for a message tied into this etiquette as I said in my social media post I am sure that the people that already have good etiquette will be the ones that get this or listen to this and the ones that don't think they have bad etiquette probably won't like this but that's okay you never know how we're going to interpret messages and so for me a lot of times i don't get a message and then suddenly i'm like oh i think this applies to me and so i hope that you just receive it with an open heart but first, we're going to look at the shoes up close with me trying them on, and then comes the message. So if you are a On Fire family friend member, you know that first we look at the shoes. Okay, first things first. You're gonna need to know which pair of shoes to pick for me based on what I am talking about today. So sometimes I ask you to choose my shoes based on my outfit or where I'm going and what I'm doing. Yes, I think you ought to choose my shoes based on my outfit, but for the style of what I'm wearing as far as an etiquette idea, I would love to hear from you. I will probably not be able to refrain from giving my opinion along the way, but you can sure tell me what you think in the comments. But first we're going to look at my top pick that I would choose and the bottom pick is going to be at the end and I'll tell you why, but then why don't you chime in with your vote. Okay, so let's get started. First up, I am going to pick the one that I would choose. And this is going to be the one. I did wear some of these shoes in a recent video, but they do fit with this style again, I believe. The reason I chose these, and again, here's the name of it, if anybody can pronounce that for me. This one goes well with stockings, which is what I have on today because I think that that goes with etiquette. At least some people consider it pretty old fashioned or perhaps a lot of times people think that good etiquette is to have your legs covered. At least that's why in the past women wore them. So it seemed very appropriate to have those on for an etiquette video. So what do you think? Yes or no it's a classic black pump i'm going to show you at the very end the full outfit in snapshots because sometimes my camera angle is weird when i try to give you the full shot right now okay so the next one that not necessarily in any particular order is going to be these do i even know what the brand is Joan and David. Okay, so these are also a classic black pump, but they are more of a patent. So there we go. <laughs> I always feel like I look so clumsy when I do this because the carpet's a little, has a little give with my heel. Okay. So there's the classic patent black pump. I would wear those if I had a black purse, which I do have, but I don't have it currently in rotation. That is more of like a patent leather. Okay, so those two. Uh, this one would be a good choice. I did just wear these in one of my other videos. I have not tried wearing these with stockings, although I do think that they work fine. 
right, so let's see. And these would be my Labutins. Uh huh. So they feel okay. I'm I'm not sure if I love them with the stockings, but yes. There we go. That's that one. Okay. I would not normally wear a flat like this but perhaps it's good etiquette to wear a flat depending on where I'm going. So this is a kind of more of like a kitten heel. And I don't know what you think about having the line and then having an open heel, if that's good etiquette. Are you gonna get sick of that word? <laughs> okay, so sometimes I'll wear these, depends on the outfit, but they are comfortable little tiny kitten heel is sometimes nice for a long day of work okay so that's what is that one number four this is going to be the one that i do not consider to be i don't know maybe it's not it doesn't have to do with etiquette maybe it just has to do with my ingrained growing up that you did not wear open toe with stockings so what do you think i grew up with that mentality just like my whole no white after labor day thought but see i would not normally ever wear a stocking with an open toe and that is why i chose these because they're all closed toed but maybe you need to change my mind <laughs> what do you think this is a steve madden pair and I do love them. They're, they're comfortable actually. Even though they're very tall, they are comfortable. So, okay, so you tell me what you think. I'm gonna have snapshots of the whole outfit at the end of the video. So I put on the first pair and I'll keep those on for the rest of this, but Etiquette, oh my goodness, we could go in so many different directions. So I actually prayed that I would have some cohesive thoughts for this video because there's a lot I could say. So one of the things that I think that most of us have found through social media and the opportunity for everyone to have an opinion is that people can hide behind a profile that is not their real self and therefore they can say whatever they think and there's no filter and they maybe speak without thinking they maybe speak without giving thought to how that would affect somebody and because of that we have a very interesting thing going on that it's not new to anybody. We all realized that years ago when we were growing up, you had to say something to somebody's face or over the phone most of the time. Most people, if they wrote a letter, it took them time to think about it and they really took the time to consider it, what they were saying. And now we can really work off of reflex very quickly. And it can be hurtful. It could be that it's coming from kind of more a fleshly place inside instead of coming from a really good, well thought out reaction or thing to say. And we can talk about that in a lot of different arenas that goes in, you know, politics or just personally. I'm talking pretty much right now more personally. And a lot of this is interesting to me because I tend to be somebody that would, I'm kind of a people pleaser, but I'm trying to get past that. And I think I've made a lot of progress in that area because I've really had to realize that I'm here to please God and not people. However, you're always going to have a little bit of a inner reaction when people respond to you in a negative way. I don't think we can help that. The question is, how do we deal with that? How do we handle that? So sometimes you think somebody does not necessarily have good etiquette the way they're talking to you, but 
I have found that through my whole life, I have this weird thing about me where I'm always looking deeper into somebody's heart. So just as a random example, if somebody is driving down the street, cuts me off, flips me off, seems very angry and you know they're you can just tell their reaction inside my first reaction is what in the world is wrong with you but i'm very quick to realize that that person is not happy there is something going on in their life that caused them to react like that they're whether they've had a bad day whether they've had a bad life because of a lot of bad things that have happened to them I usually qu pretty quickly come to the point of praying for that person. I've had a few experiences recently that are very applicable to that too, and I'll explain as we go. So when you look into a person's heart and you think about why they're reacting they, the way that they are, maybe it's not proper etiquette, maybe it's not the right way to respond to somebody, but if we can look into their heart and see even if you never find out, you can still get to that point where you try to see people through the eyes of God and what God knows about that person. And we can pray for them and then we can react in an appropriate way. Some of what we see out there on social media, people don't treat each other as if that's my mother I'm speaking to or that's my sister that I'm speaking to or my wife that I'm speaking to. There's vulgarity, there's put downs, there's just very blatant slamming. And I think if we could really look at each other as my sister, my brother, my mother, my father, and really think about how we would want somebody to talk to them, we will change the way that we act. Now, here's the thing that gets very tricky is that a lot of times people feel like, well, I'm gonna give that person what they gave to me because they treated me like this, I'm gonna treat them back. So my question is, how does that, if you think that what they did was wrong, how does it make you any better by doing the same thing? To me, it makes absolutely no logical sense to give back to somebody what they gave to you when you don't like it. Uh, I think we have to get to a point where we break that cycle. And so I think the best way to break the cycle is what Jesus taught us in the Bible. The number one is that we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is that we love our neighbor as ourself. Why does that matter so much? First of all, my way of getting peace within me is knowing that I'm right with God and knowing that I am following in His will. It is very easy to fall into a trap of trying to please a lot of different people and you don't please anybody and then you feel very disrupted, you feel very anxious, but when you know that you're loving God with all of your heart, what that looks like is very interesting. When we think about, let's just pretend you have a spouse and you never talk to them or you talk to them, but you never listen to them. You shut the door, go about your day, come back. You either don't talk to them or you talk and don't listen to them and you repeat this behavior every day. And then one day when they're not there to pick you up when you've completely crashed, you're mad at them for not being there to fix all your problems. I think we would all say that doesn't really make sense. You've not had a relationship with that person. You haven't invited them in. You haven't listened to them. This We do this with God all of the time. We either don't talk to him at all and then we're mad at him because he didn't solve all the problems that we pushed him out of, or we talk and then we don't listen. And that's not a relationship. So we have to get to the point where we not only have conversations and invite him into everything, 
we also listen <laughs> and then we listen and we do something because he's God of the universe. He is the creator. He's the one that knows us better than we know ourselves. He also knows the other people that we're coming in contact with every day and he knows their heart and he can reveal that to you, but you don't, whoops, we're going all over the place. I'm going to start scooting around the room. Um, we can't get to the point of seeing people's hearts if we are not spending time with the God who knows their hearts. And again, loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength means you invite him in, talk to him, and then also listen and act, act on what you hear. And of course, if it's in accordance with the Bible, you know that that is not going to be something against God. The second part of this is loving your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't want to be spoken to the way that somebody is speaking to you, then don't do it back. If they are reacting in a really negative way on social media to you, what would you want? I would want somebody to be praying for me to open my eyes if I really have a roadblock up. I wouldn't want them to just spout off rude comments back at me. I would want them to engage with me. Jesus came and he sat with the people who were lost. He had conversations. He ate and drank with those people. The religious people who thought that they had it all figured out, but were not treating their neighbors as themselves, and they were not loving God with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They were trying to follow a bunch of rules. Jesus didn't come and sit and eat with those people because they didn't have an open heart or mind to him. He sat with those people who were broken, who were sinful, and who needed him and were willing to look at what he was there to offer. And I think that this is where we sometimes get really caught up. We segregate ourselves into groups. You know, you go to church and keep it at church. And then when you're out in the community, you act like a full on jerk. And who wants to be a Jesus follower, a Christian, when you live a rotten lifestyle, right? So I was, I have some examples, one not so good and one that's very better okay we recently traveled and i was talking to somebody at the airport that was checking my bag and she was i would consider kind of snotty to me um and inside i felt very bristly i don't think i reacted as negatively outwardly as i felt inwardly and i kind of told her um I misunderstood you and she I could just sense that she was irritated the thing about it is she probably has had to say the same thing to hundreds of people and for her maybe she's just kind of sick of it I don't need to take it personally and I didn't feel peace about it for a while it took me a while to feel peace over the way that she responded to me Maybe a few days later, I went to the grocery store. I come to the check stand and they had one of those like plastic barrier things near the cashier. And as I was loading my groceries, my elbow bumped her little shield. And she said, you can't load from on that side. You have to do it on the other end. And I said, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I had my back to it. And no, that's not where you load. You load on the other end. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Thank you. And I'm like putting it up there. She goes, this thing is, it can't handle your elbow bumping into it. I said, yeah, I totally get it. I bet you go crazy. I bet that thing is always happening. I'm so sorry. I had my back to it. I wasn't really paying attention. And I didn't feel anxiety about it. I wanted her to know that she wasn't, not that she wasn't going to rattle me, but I just didn't want to be rattled. And I also wanted an opportunity to find out why she was reacting so strongly. Again, probably this has happened to her so many times. So after I kind of got everything loaded, then I'm on the other end bagging and I'm like, so how's your day going? And she started to talk to me and then we had more of a conversation. And by the end I was like, God bless your day. And she was like, you too. 
And it was so nice. I thought, you know, maybe a few years back, I would have just given back to her. I'd have been silent and kept given her an evil eye or something. Because <laughs> I would have been like, you know, I, may, I it was an accident. You don't need to continue to berate me, right? But I know that when people react like that, there's something going on inside. You know that they have had either a rough day or this is like a repeated thing for them. It just it doesn't matter me you don't know what's going on in their life so you need to be the bright light for them it happened the next grocery store I went to the next day similar a little different kind of thing same thing though I reacted in a way that was better and just I felt peaceful and the whole interaction with that person ended up better and then the opportunities start to pop up where people want to know how you seem so peaceful or how you can still feel joy when all of this is going on. And to me, this is where we enter into that relationship. We have personal relationship with people. We get to know them and treat them as our brother, our sister, our mother, our father, our grandma, or whatever. We don't say vulgar things to them. We don't say things that we wouldn't say to their face. And maybe there are things that people would say to your face that they shouldn't. But again, can we look at their heart and see what's going on? The other part is to have a relationship with God, not just talk to him, not just push him away, not just ignore him, but invite him in. Just have normal conversations with him. What do you think of this, God? What, 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 what would you do in this situation? And then just be at peace and let him guide and lead you. That is the most amazing way to live. And I really find that that's how I have my peace and joy. I know that in this society, things have really kind of gone askew. My puppy Craig tells a story about how one day he was with my mom and he was um, opening the door for her and he saw some women walking up and he continued to hold the door for them. And the woman just started to berate Poppy Craig and tell him, I can hold my own door open. No, I don't need any man for that. This is where I feel like we've gotten away from good etiquette. And I know etiquette has to do with how you sit and how you eat and how you poise yourself and things like that. But this is a lot deeper. This has to do with basic human love for one another, loving each other as we want to be loved. And in that particular situation, it's sad to me that somebody can't just recognize that somebody's trying to show them kindness. But what does that say about that woman? She's been hurt somewhere along the line in her life, maybe repeatedly by who knows who. and she lashes out in a reaction that shouldn't really apply to that situation, but it did. His kindness will continue. He thankfully does not take offense to that and say, well, I'm not gonna open doors for women anymore because I might get that kind of reaction. Because look at what that will cause. That causes a disconnect from people and that's exactly what Satan wants. Instead, Puppy Craig says, you know, I recognize that, you know, she has kind of been brainwashed to think that this is a bad thing, but I'm opening the door out of kindness. I'm just doing it to look out for my fellow human being. And his heart is still in it to show love to people. It doesn't matter if they receive it or if they receive it and push it back and are negative with it. Our responsibility is to do what we need to do and we let them sort out their own issue and we pray for them because we cannot change them but don't let them change you you stick with what is good ethics morals and etiquette and don't worry about the other people there was um, another situation I was going to bring up too that sometimes at church, people will say, well, that girl's skirt is too short. Um, should we say something to her? And we had a whole discussion about this once. And it was like, no, because we could either look at it as that person 
is dressing inappropriately. Of course, this is an etiquette video again, so I'm bringing this up. Or we could say, oh, how awesome that she's in church. Or in my case, I have a daughter that's very tall with long legs. And a lot of times the things that she'll put on, we don't realize she grew a few inches. So maybe the skirt, I'm like, oh yeah, that is a little shorter than I thought. But it's not to, not trying to be anything, um, you know, inappropriate. It's just, oh, we didn't even realize that this is what's happened. Let's retire that skirt and buy you a new one. Instead of putting a judgment on that person, shunning them when here we are in church in a place where God accepts us all the way we are and just as we are. And the thing is, though, that the people that look at that and and are kind of judgmental, where is it in their life where they've had difficulties, you know? And so I think we have to have a really warm and open heart toward people. Yes, we always have to protect ourselves, but don't become like people and stand in judgment, sit with them, you know, enjoy their presence, get to know them. And that I believe is how we can use good etiquette. We learn how to listen better. We learn how to sit and be still. We don't have our phone at the table while we're trying to get to know people. And you know, I'm talking about the table. This goes across the board with your relationships with people in your personal life or in your uh, social media life, how do we engage with those people and show love? So I know this has been a really long video, but I really think that it's something we all know, but sometimes you really have to get back to the basics of how do we want to be treated? That's exactly how we wanna treat other people. And then I believe our relationships will build You'll also be able to help people. We all want to help each other. I know that because there are very few blatantly just pure evil people in the world. Most people are super hurt if they are lashing out in negative ways. Just like they say, hurt people hurt people. So keep that in mind as you go about and see if you can bring that joy and peace to them. We're going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to be together, help us to learn how to love each other better, to keep you in our relationships so that we're not just talking at you or we're not shutting you out, but we're listening and conversing and just living and moving and having our being in you because I know that that makes such a difference in our relationships and how we are with others and it brings us so much more peace and joy. So thank you so much for being here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'll show you me wearing these shoes, and I want you to vote, and then you tell me which one is the most conducive for etiquette. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for being with me, and I'll see you for another episode of, who knows, maybe High Heel Hallelujah, maybe Choose Your Shoes. Weigh in and tell me which series you like better or both, I don't care, or neither, <laughs> and I will see you, but until then, live your life on fire.